Hello everybody, I'm back with another video for you today, and I know I did a Skelliger video very recently, uh, but I couldn't not share this deck with you guys. Uh, I was having a ton of fun with it, uh, and uh, quite a bit of success as well, which is surprising because it is an iced deck uh, who is typically thought to be kind of a bit of a meme tier leader, but don't judge. Uh, this deck is actually pretty damn good, um, probably even better than Svalblood, which you know, I played and was pretty, pretty decent in my eyes. Um, Iced is not bad, it's not bad. There's a lot of really cool combos with the warriors that are in this deck and that you can pull off and that when they work are very, very, very powerful. Um, and of course, Skelliger is a pretty good faction in general. You have the thinning tools available to you with Burner, Coral and whatnot. And just a lot of raw power in the bronzes as well. So... Uh, let's jump into the cards and the idea of the deck, of course, as we always do. Uh, so we do have that thinning, we've got the burner, coral, and all the discard stuff that you would normally expect in a Skellig deck. One Scald, double Skirm, Morkvarg, etc. We also have Spores as coral targets, uh, because we're playing Yutta. We have Primal Savagery as well, as a target if you need to, otherwise just a 7 for 5, very good. Marauder as that red coin play. Light Longships to set up potential Primal Savagery and Ravagers uh, as well, uh, which Happen to be pretty good, as well as Butchers, which are also very good with Harold Hounds. Now, similar kind of package to Inspire Blood. In fact, this list is pretty damn similar, um, but there are a few things that make it pretty unique. Uh, one of those is Hemdal. This is one of the finishers you can use with this deck. The idea is to get a really powerful Iced off, uh, and one way you can do that is from, you know, reviving Hemdal or reviving Hjalmar uh, while playing the other one on the same turn, so basically um, you're getting this huge combo, Hemdall boosts himself every time uh, you deal damage with a warrior by the same amount that you damage. So say you play Hjalmar, do 12 damage by you know throwing a Yutta, you're going to get a boosted Hemdall by 12, getting you 16 points. Um, so there's a very, very powerful potential there as one of the combos. You also have Knut and Vilkal as a different but equally strong potentially uh, combo that you can pull off, but you need Knut in the graveyard for that. Often you want to play Olaf earlier in the game, Knut it, get the value on that combination of cards, which is commonly played in Skellige anyway, regardless of the leader, which I think is very cool. Uh, so you go for that, you have him in the graveyard, and then you can ice Knut onto Vildkal and proc Vildkal immediately, uh, you know, giving you a really chunky, uh, effectively 20, what is it, 21 point play? Yeah, 21 point play, um, which is pretty damn strong, I gotta say. Uh, you know, one card and a leader, nine provisions, not bad at all. So, uh, that's kind of the idea of the deck. You want to play for a bit of value earlier on in the game, get rid of bronzes, get rid of Coldwell. Coldwell can be used on blue coin with tactical advantage to give you a 12 point Yutta. Uh, as, you'll, as he'll be the highest unit. So that's a pretty damn strong combo to lead off with if you're on blue coin and have those cards in hand. If not, you can just play Caldwell, you can Spores, Jutta, you can of course use your Bronzes, Harold, whatnot. Um, another cool combo that you can do is if you uh, want to proc Vildkal and you want to do this hemdal Hjalmar combo in round 3, one thing you can do is with Svalblood Totem, uh, you can damage the Vildkal by 2, uh, to help to proc the Berserk. If you have Harold on the board and you have Totem, Vildkarl in hand, and the Harold doesn't get answered, you can instantly proc Vildkarl. The turn he comes down, you don't need any Canute or any shenanigans. You can play that into the Totem, damage it with the Totem, damage it with the Harold, and it will instantly uh, transform into the champion. So uh, there's a very cool combo there as well, which I've pulled off multiple times. And, you know, Hemdal, you can play him. He even works with Knut if you don't have Hel uh, Hjalmar in the graveyard. Hemdal, maybe you play from hand, you res Knut uh, onto Olaf. There's just so many ways that this combo can work, guys, and effectively it's really, really powerful. Uh, basically, you have multiple big finishers in the same way that kind of Svalblood does, but uh, a little bit better, I think. And also, it's worth pointing out that if Hemdal sticks around, which you can do if you buff him to a reasonable you know, amount of strength, you maybe play him, get the Knut, get the Hjalmar, and then you know, not even as your last play in the round. Uh, if he survives and then you can further damage stuff with warriors such as Canute, such as the Ravager and whatnot, then you're going to be in a great spot because that's just another engine effectively on the board uh, as well as getting you a big amount of tempo. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this deck and I've been finding it pretty damn strong. I've actually been climbing my Skelliger, my Skelliger MMR on Pro Ladder with this reasonably well. So uh, I do think it's a viable deck, which is really awesome. And I know if people wanted to check out Iced, I do as well. There's also things to experiment with crack and other stuff in Skellige. There's so much uh, potential there. Uh, so I'm sure I'll, I'll have another look at Skellige soon. I will do other factions, of course, as well. Um, but anyway, that's enough about the deck. Let's jump into a game or two and see how it plays. All right, first game going to be up against Usurper. 
We'll see how the deck does without this kind of finisher then. Uh, and after that, of course, we can we can show it with the full glory of Hemdal, Hjalmar, Knut, and all the rest, of course. So, and the Mulligans here, some of our cards are going to be a bit weaker, but that should be okay. We'll just have to drop a Hemdal kind of earlier in the game and I guess get it moved or locked or damaged or whatever. Uh, not the end of the world. Hand isn't too bad. We can probably get rid of Butcher since it's not very good uh, without the Harold. That's kind of the main synergy this card wants. Uh, Canute is fine, I suppose. Not really doing that much here. I can probably keep this, to be honest. We're going to thin a lot with the Coral. Keep the Skirmisher for a discard target or whatever. Marauder, of course, is our red coin play, so we'll go with that. Uh, leading off with that should be pretty good news. And uh, yeah, we'll see where to go from there. We don't really even need to set up the graveyard in this matchup, so maybe not the best, uh, you know, tutorial for this deck, I suppose, but, um, you know, should be interesting either way. So Hemdal, definitely not bad if it's going to work here with the with the Canute, but I think it will probably be removed or whatever. Uh, Light Longship going to get thinned for us. That's not even bad news, to be honest with you. All right, we can probably play that Hemdal you know, now just to get rid of it. As I say, it's going to be bad. It's going to get locked or destroyed at some point. Effectively as a four-point engine, which we can't really make work in, in against Usurper. So, happy to let that one go. We do have some other good cards, though. Yutta, Coldwell are both things that we want to play this round. We'll go with Yutta now. Again, Yutta, going to be usable with Hjalmar, but apart from that, not, uh, you know doing much in this deck. I was thinking about putting Sigdrufa's right in, but I think it's a bit too gimmicky to really work properly. Um, that being said, you know, you could try it if you were feeling experimental. So Coldwell now isn't too bad. We can get rid of him and make sure, uh, you know, that we're not, we're not bricking him later, having him stolen or whatever. Uh, we have Spores to reset if we need to. We'll most likely discard them with Coral, but Skirmish is another discard target. If we want to Spore Yutta, we can do that. Um, potentially, or even Coldwell, uh, and we will need to take the biggest unit back. So let's let's maybe spoil Yetta now. And it may be there's tool removal coming in here, but if there is, then we won't be so vulnerable on our Vildkal or whatever later that we try to make big. So that shouldn't be too bad. We'll see. Otherwise, we don't have many plays left here. Um, we kind of would like to kill. You know, the Infiltrator if possible, but going to be pretty tricky too, uh, since we don't have Bloodthirst enabled. Don't have a long ship this round to really get the Bloodthirst going. Coral can, can make it work. Uh, maybe we should have even gone with that a little bit earlier here, but maybe we can play it now, since they're going with a very low tempo play. We don't really have any reason to leave just yet. If we're able to win round one, it's going to be nice, of course, as it always is, especially if we win on even. So, you know, we'll do the stuff. We'll get rid of one Spores here. And I think get rid of the Skirmisher as well. Just a couple of bricks gone. Bit of tempo as well. Not too shabby. And now we have the Bloodthirst enabled for Ravager onto Infiltrator if we want to take it. We could even play Houndsnout with Butcher this round as well. Since we've drawn both of those. Not too bad. And the opponent's going to be uh, probably worried about, you know, losing, losing cards. If they lose on even cards, that would be very bad for them. Especially at four, we're not even on five or anything, so we can take a dry pass if you want. Got the Olaf for the Canute, that's probably the main synergy we'll have worked there. Or onto Vilkal, but, you know, he might be dealt with by locks or whatever. Pretty likely a Usurper for that to happen. Uh, gonna be a Shoop Usurper deck, okay. Explain some of these bronze choices or inclusions. And gonna be Knight as well. If that's resilience, it's a little bit scary. But it's just damage. Okay. Uh, I think we should probably go ahead and play Berserker. I think, you know, winning this round would be still quite a nice thing, of course. And we can take it now with Harold, I guess. Or Knut, even, on the pass, depending which is less valuable. Probably it's, it's kind of a tricky one, honestly. Okay, the Caldo actually presents pretty interesting opportunity for us to kind of yoink his, his cold where we can maybe steal that if we Knut... Uh, you know, our Coldwell and throw it over here. That is definitely an option, and I think we're going to take it. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we missed out on the Canute for later, I suppose, which is kind of lame, but... 
Doesn't seem to be too bad. Like, we have a very real chance of actually winning the round now, because we have the highest unit. Maybe not super likely, but... I think it's worth taking the risk. Uh, if it's much of a risk. And at the very least, we're going to trade, you know, gold for gold or whatever. They've already played quite a few good cards. Caldwell, Regis, Shoop, and now Roderick, plus another gold. So, you've got to imagine a lot of the provisions are kind of tied up there. Okay, interesting. So, Caldwell is going to be stolen on our side. I wonder if we can play Butcher here. If we play Butcher and we hit the Caldwell, hmm. How is that exactly going to work? It will bleed immediately. We can, I mean, we can take it. We just have to play a couple of cards here. Do we want to play these two cards? Is it worth it to win the round? I'm not sure it is. We don't really need the Colvin in our graveyard because we have Yatta for Hyalma anyway. So we'll just let them have the round. I mean, they paid a pretty big price here to win. Um, you know, Knut maybe we could have used later on, but I don't think it's that bad. Uh, news that we haven't got him anymore. The Marauders are mm, kind of not the best. We'll get rid of one here. Vilkal also might not be too good, especially with this hand. We can proc him, though, with, with Butcher and Harold in theory. Or even with the Totem if we draw it. So I'm not, you know, super against keeping this card. It might be a little bit dead. We can always drop him on the pass here. That's also an option, but... I think we'll, we'll get rid of him for now. I'd rather not have that brick. And okay, Skull's going to be a good play here, just to thin a little bit. And get rid of that card. Hand is looking very nice right now. We're probably just going to be able to win on pure value, I imagine. Hjalmar 15 point play, potentially. If there's a big enough unit and... You know, you've got Totem, Harold are both very good cards, as you probably know. Um, so, you know, since we have the Butcher, we've got the Totem. This might be worth keeping, the Vildkarl, honestly. Um, I'm going to get rid of Ravager, because this is a bit rubbish, no matter what. And then Skirmish is also not great. Um, but okay, since we have Harold, there's a reasonable chance that Vildkarl will survive in some way. Um, either they'll, you know, use their removal on Harold, and he'll not be removed, or they'll maybe use it on Olaf or whatever. Uh, I think we can probably start with the totems, to be honest. Because then we can play Olaf into them. And the later we save Harold, the, the less likely it will be answered, right? And the less likely Vildkarl will be answered. We want Harold to live for Vildkarl, if possible. But we can go with an Olaf now in, into this uh, totem. It's actually more points to trigger Olaf than it is just to kind of, you know, flip a flan fanatic. You get two points by... Uh, we're doing it this way. Uh oh, that is not good. <laughs> uh, so Vilkar going to be taken out by Shilad. Eh, unfortunate, but I suppose it's not the end of the world. He uh, won't work anymore. Uh, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. We do still have pretty good Hjalmar. We've got Butcher onto Harold's pals and whatnot. But yeah, Vilkar not going to be transforming today. Going to be just a one strength unit. We'll see how, how bad that truly is here. Do you still have a ton of points with, with these cu couple of eight point plays? Harold is a seven as well. Like, it's not it's not bad by any means. But, you know, you're not going to... You know, if we had ice, obviously the combo here would be... We're going to res Knut and proc this. Either way, it would have been shut down by Shillard. That is something that Shillard does. Uh, he messes with these with these combos, unfortunately. But There's a Letho. So, you know, Serret and Orcs are both in hand. That's good information to have. Very good information to have. Um, we can kill a skull. Is it worth it? Or is it better to hit the Olaf? It's probably better to hit a skull. It's like a little bit safer, right? Uh, in terms of the points or whatever. So let's do that. And we hit Shallard, which is good for Primal Savagery. Uh, hopefully they won't get transformed or anything. Let's uh, hit the totem now and, and proc our Olaf. I think there's no reason not to do that. A little bit vulnerable to Leo on Olaf, but... Whatever. And of course, this one point play isn't doing us any huge favors. Um, but okay. Skull are going to be used onto Leo. That's actually good. Uh, Letho, sorry. It's good for us because we can get Primal Savagery off, so we're definitely going to take that while we can. Nausicaa Sergeant's going to be the Hjalmar target. And we'll just play our one point Vilkal. Hopefully, it'll be enough. You know, Gregoire would be scary. We know there's Orc Serret uh, in hand. And, you know, still. Still a, a Serret's out there, so... I'm gonna go with Yalman now, I think. It's pretty reasonable. 
So five points from the Orcs. Is Gregoire enough? I do think it, it's it's probably it's very close, right? I think it's actually a tie if they have uh, if they have Greg. So we'll uh, we'll see about that, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, Vildkarl, not particularly good. Oh, wait, no, it would be a win if they have Gregoire. Okay. Uh, Curse of Corruption, not going to be quite enough to take it for them. Fair play. A bit of a scary one with uh, dead Vil Vil Vildkarl uh, in that round three, but uh, that's not meant to happen. Uh, hopefully it won't happen in the next game. Let's jump into another one and see if we can win with our Iced this time. All right, our next opponent is going to be Woodland Spirit. Can be a little bit of a scary one uh, if, you know... They have a lot of points typically in the in the round three or whatever, uh, but okay, we can get rid of Ravager here. We don't need two of them, definitely not. Uh, Blue coin Coldwell Yutta combo is available, so we'll probably end up going for that in this round one. Butcher again, not great until we got Harold's Pal or whatever later uh, to synergize with. Olaf plus Knut is fine. We're perfectly happy to see that in round one. We can play it if we need to, uh, and we have both food for Burner and Cross. This hand is very very good for us. Especially since we're on blue coin, this is kind of the ideal blue coin hand, and we're going to open up with that Coldwell into Tactical Advantage Yutta, potentially, if the opportunity arises for that to happen. They might, you know, try to damage this or whatever. Um, Nekarinos, eh, we could actually just remove them immediately with Coral, and I don't hate the play, I don't hate it at all. In fact, it's probably a very good one, so let's go and do that, and just trade up on our, on our Coral, make sure... No Neckers are going to survive. That should be fine. Not going to boost yet, otherwise we're a bit prone to, to Geralt or whatever happening. Um, and we've got, yeah. Yata. One thing this deck is lacking is removal. So if you're against engine decks, long round decks, you might struggle if you don't bleed them. Uh, you probably want to be trying to really win round one and then, you know, push them hard in round two with maybe one or two combos, maybe even use your ice or whatever to split up their long round potential. But uh, I do think, I mean, the power plays you have with this deck are insane. I mean, look, we're up 27 points. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and if we gain a pretty good foothold, we're going to be able to, of course, set up our graveyard with Olaf Knut uh, and all that good jazz. Maybe even pull off a Hamdor combo later on as well. We're so far ahead in points, I feel like passing here is pretty reasonable. Just because we're going to be able to at least force out some good cards from the opponent, if not maybe even a leader ability or, or something like that. Especially when their kind of uh, dominance units are all dead, right? So I think we'll take the pass. They can do it, probably, but uh, it's going to allow us to just get into round three and hopefully get a few good cards from them as well You know, before before we get out. We could have played like a Ravager there, I guess, to kill a Necker, but I think this works out quite well. They've got to still make 20 points, which... It's probably going to make them play a spear tip or two or something like that. Thrive on the board, but we'll see. 15 strength unit on our side, so if they have Coldwell, they can't play that. Going to be just a Catacan, and then, yeah, should be reasonably easy for them to get the rest of the points here. But in theory, our round three isn't that bad against Woodland. We will need to maybe rely on Hendel a little bit. Might have to lean on him a little bit to uh, to actually work. We do have the backup iced as well with um, Yutta in the graveyard now, so that might get eaten by Ozra. That's another reason why this matchup is maybe a bit tricky, a bit trickier than others. Um, but okay, we have we have so many kind of combo pieces here. It looks really juicy, uh, maybe even too juicy. So I think we can mulligan a Ravager. Uh, we can probably mulligan Scald as well. I think. We don't have enough discard targets to make that worth it right now. And uh, we'll see if Hemdol is able to work. We don't have Hjalmar right now, which is the uh, the main way to, to synergize with him. We could drop a Knut if we want to enable our Knut Vildkarl. So I think we're going to do that. Just establish the graveyard a bit more. In case Jutta gets eaten as well. It's very important not to have a dead ice to it. Okay, Butcher's not terrible, but it's also not great, so... Late Longship is also... we don't really need two of them, you know, so... we we'll probably get rid of that, get rid of Butcher. Morgvarg is a fine pickup, um, although I'm a bit scared of bricking, so I'm going to mulligan a Skirmisher. Butcher again, sure. Uh, and there is a potential brick, which you don't really want to see. Uh, we can probably start with Harold. It will maybe get answered, though, so Light Longship's probably a better option. It's maybe going to bait removal from them. 
If we don't find uh, Hjalmar, then Hendel's going to be a bit sad, I, I guess. But we still got Canute potentially to synergize with that for a little bit of value. So, you know, plus Ravager or whatever, if uh, if Hemdall does survive. And if he doesn't, well, you know, it is what it is, really. Okay, that is a little Thrive unit. We could just, you know, kill that with Ravager plus the ping from this. Uh, we can also let it live for now. We could also try to high roll with Marauder, I guess. Uh, I don't mind playing Harold either, just to kind of do that. They haven't actually played Crone yet to, to enable uh, stuff there, so probably playing Ravage is fine and just removing this for now. Maybe playing Hemdal first is actually correct. I kind of like it. This way we might get a little bit of uh, extra value on him with the, the Ravager working. With the damage, so we'll try, try for that and then... Uh, See where to go from there. We want to get the totem down, maybe proc Vildkal with the Harold, and then do Olaf shenanigans with Canute as well. It's definitely possible. Okay, and Count Coldwell going to be played, um, which is definitely interesting. Potentially, it's not actually worth killing the Wyvern in that case. Hmm. We can just let it keep procking, I suppose. Then again, hmm. it's a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? This will get some large amount of value. I don't think we're going to be able to steal the Coldwell very easily, so... Kind of tempted to just kill the Wyvern. I think it's probably okay, right? Yeah, I think so. Hemdall's getting... he's getting bigger! If we find Hjalmar, he's going to be a very, very good play here, right? Um, he'll be worth a lot more points. Or another Ravager. That'll work, that'll work kind of fine. But Imrith Wrath going to come down. That's actually not even that bad. Effectively, he's worth effectively 10 points there, right? Uh, in a way, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, so next we can probably play Totem. And then we can go with Harold. We basically want to... Oh, we could even damage this, but it's probably not even worth doing. We want to make sure we get the... The uh, Vildkal proc this way. It's a little bit easier than uh, using Canute, I suppose. But we can do Olaf first. That's definitely an option. Might also be worth checking out what cards we're drawing just to have a better idea of what we're doing uh, in that department. But for now, I think we're fine. We're fine, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, if we play Harold, we can then do some really nasty combo the turn after. So. Uh, let's do that now. If he doesn't get removed, he very well might. Entirely possible. We will see, I suppose. I really like the totem. It just allows you to do some crazy things with uh, with Olaf, with Vildkal and whatnot. He might die, but they still have an enabled crone, so they're relying on a bit of 4 damage removal, maybe a Regis or something if they have that. Nope, just going to be a crone. So it's a bit late. Uh, for them, which is really good news for us, because we can proc Vildkal immediately, so... Uh, let's go for this combo, I think. And what is the combo? Well, we basically are going to go Vildkal next to the Totem. We're going to hit it with Harold, And uh, we're also going to res our Canute at the same time to get a massive Olaf. So we're going to get two really chunky units, do four damage as well. We can even pick off, uh, you know, one of these uh, Necker Warriors, which is pretty nice. So we do this first, of course, uh, so we can get as much Olaf value as possible. We now proc the totem. Oh, it's so good. We get a 12 point and we proc Olaf. 29 points up. Not bad. We'll see if it's enough uh, in, the, in the long run. We can now start procking the skulls with Harold, so that's pretty nice. Um, I suppose we should burn her first, just in case we can't discard the more order. Uh, we might have to play that. I guess as a vanilla card. Yeah, it looks like we might. I suppose it's not too bad. Yeah. Bit of a shame we bricked there. Hjalmar as a draw would have been game game uh, winning for sure, I think. But you know what, it's, it's probably okay. Uh, Spores onto this is also pretty good. Or onto an Osrel or whatever. So that's not even too bad of a, of a draw. And there is going to be a crone there. Played. So we can maybe just play this honestly as a as a two. Uh, I don't think it's too bad. We could spores first though for for a bunch of points, I suppose. If they have an Osrel, they can always save it till the very end anyway, right? So no point really saving anything. And <laughs> still getting a little bit of value out of Harold as well. We're very far ahead now, but this Marauder might cause us issues. We'll see if they have what it takes to get you know thirty odd points. 
Uh, and I think we're just too far ahead, honestly, for that spear tip to even matter at this stage. Uh, you know, we're not going to play this on melee. I think this should be too big of a difference to make. They need 20 points, and they just played a 20-point card. So I doubt they'll have another. Nah, not even close. <laughs> so we bricked a little bit in round three, and even then, oh, the finisher value is insane. This deck's really awesome, guys. I do recommend you try it out uh, if you haven't already. Lots of cool combos, lots of thinking going on, some awesome fun times to be had, um, and definitely a powerful deck. I don't think I've lost with this yet, honestly. I don't think I've lost a single game, so that shows you how powerful it can be. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, do subscribe if you want more videos. I will be bringing out a few videos to help newer players and stuff, uh, you know, for, for reference, and even intermediate players and whatever, uh, sort of crafting guides and stuff like that. So uh, if you're not interested in those, sorry about that. There will be, of course, more daily videos coming later uh, for decks and such. So don't worry, got you covered. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.